Hi, I'm Staff Sergeant I'm a tank commander in the Armored Corps. As you can see behind me is a Merkava Mark IV tank, part of the 401 Brigade. See the cannon, 120 millimeters. We have two machine guns, one that's attached to the turret. That's the part above here. It spins around the tank and can shoot at any opponent, any enemy at up to five kilometer distance. We have the part here that's called the chassis. It's also used as the chassis for the Namer, which infantry use, and that is where the crew is. That's where the driver is. We have a few other unique defense systems. We have the trophy system, or the defense system, which intercepts uh, missiles, intercepts uh, cornets and uh, anti-tank missiles that uh, our enemies use against us. The, we call it Sarot Safta in, uh, in Hebrew, which is uh, grandma's hair that has a special material which uh, blocks out also any uh, shot at the tank. The iniquity of uh, tanks in Israel is that the most important thing is the tank and the crew sur survivability. So what we have is we have the tank, uh, the tank's engine is in front. So when the tank gets hit, the engine uh, takes the first hit and it saves the crew. We have four roles in the tank. We have a tank driver. The driver is, of course, in charge of driving the tank, listening to what the commander tells him to drive. We have a gunner who shoots. He moves the turret and aims at the targets. He has three different guns uh, to use. He has a Browning machine gun. He has a normal machine gun with uh, 767 rounds. And he has the 120 millimeter cannon. We then have a loader who's in charge of loading the missiles and making sure that nothing gets caught in between the turret and the chassis. As you can tell, the turret can spin and anything that is between the turret and the chassis can get, uh, can get damaged and it's the loader's job to make sure that doesn't happen. And then we have me, I'm the tank commander. I give instructions to the crew. I listen to communications with the officer and the platoon commander and see what needs to be done, what's our mission, and I, of course, ensure the safety of my crew. Now, for an order for a tank to operate, you need all four people to do their job well. A loader doesn't load well, ruins the experience of the tank. It will not operate. A gunner can't shoot if he doesn't have any rounds. A tank that doesn't drive properly or that keeps knocking into things also isn't so viable on the battlefields. The tank is a big machine, it requires a lot of maintenance. Daily maintenance on the tank, uh, focusing mainly on the track. We have a priority system. The most important thing is the track. If the tank can't drive, it's not maneuverable, then it th has no use. After that, we take care of all the weapon systems. We take care of things inside the tank, things for the crew's safety. Now, how do you live in a tank? No matter how many days or weeks you spend in a tank, it's still difficult. That's our task to do. You get used to sleeping in it. Uh, I personally sleep in the back hatchet. There's an area, we call it the Misderon, which is a corridor in English. And its purpose is first and foremost for people that get injured. When someone is injured, we move him to the back and we wait for someone to come and rescue him. Besides that, we can also put a fifth crewman. During the war, I had a paramedic who slept in the corridor. It is very confined and uncomfortable, but he did it because he had to. Now, we get used to eating, sleeping in the tank. There's no toilet. Uh, we just use garbage bags and our helmets. The tank gets very, very hot. It's actually hottest at night. The tank takes a lot of hours to heat up because it's a big metal vessel. And in the day, it actually cools down. Now, we have air vents in the tank. We have fans for the crewmen, and we have something which is sort of like an air conditioning. It blows out, it's a uh, pipe that blows out cold air. We can also use it in case of an emergency. If there's smoke in the tank, put it to our mouths and uh, breathe in through it. In general, we have lots of drills that get us ready for war and for difficult situations. We have drills for almost anything. We have drills for evacuation. We have drills for soldiers that get injured, whether it's the driver, loader, or gunner. We have a step-by-step -step instructions for the crewmen, what we do in each situation, and everyone knows what they need to do. And we practice that on a weekly basis. Before the war, we had something called precious time. We had 
two straight weeks where we were just waiting to enter and we trained from the morning to night getting ready for these situations. If a tank gets hit in the front on the engine, we have a drill for that. We know how to do almost anything, whether we're shot at, whether the tank blows up. And it's my job as a tank commander to give out those instructions in real time under crazy stress. Sometimes even if you've been injured and we're expected to do our job, we're trained and prepared for any operational activity. As you can see, I'm sitting on the engine. It's currently covered, but this is one of the safety measurements the tank has, which ensures survivability. For the crew, we have the engine in the front, so if a shell or anti-tank missile is shot at the front of the tank, this will take the burden. We do know that the tank will then not be operational because there won't be an engine, and we're willing to live with that because our priority is to keep the soldiers safe. This is the 120 millimeter cannon. It's attached to the turret. This wider part is for the gases to go outwards. When you shoot, there's a big reconnaissance. This whole cannon flies back inside the tank and there's tons of gases that pass by here and it can move up and down and spin 360 degrees. Here we have wind that comes out. When the engine starts, we have hot air coming out of here. On the other side, we actually have cold air that comes out. These wheels, which we call bugim, uh, it's actually my favorite part of the tank to switch. So we have some uh, important features here we have reverse camera. Here's a light that lights up. You can see a tank ahead of you. That's sometimes how you can see the tank when there's tons of dust and you're not really sure how far you are away from a tank. As long as you see this light and you know you're doing well. Our operation uh, in Jabalia, my platoon led the brigade and the first tank had a mine put on the tank in between the hatchet and the turret and thank God it didn't explode. Had a lot of situations of Civilians walking by with white flags, which of course we would never shoot at, and also sometimes civilians who are threatening our tank, who are filming our tank, and I know that they're giving up our coordinates to Hamas right now, but I won't strike them because they're not uh, threatening me, and that's how we operate in the IDF. It's important for me to be able to say that I did my 100% to protect the country and the civilians here. I want people up north and down south by Gaza to be able to return to their homes. Still, unfortunately, many communities have not returned home yet and their homes are still being rebuilt. And I know that when I'm fighting, I'm fighting for them and I'm fighting for their safe return.